Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so this weekend, I hosted a workshop and the title of the workshop was why you aren't getting results. And I've been reached out by people who were looking to attend or were looking to maybe uh, have it streamed virtually and they either couldn't attend, we didn't stream it virtually. So I'm going to be putting together um, just a recap of the slides, how the workshop went, and I'll go through the slides um, as well, the same way I did in the presentation. So for those of you who were unable to uh, be there, we'll reap all the benefits as those who did. Um, so again, why you aren't getting results by myself, John Moulton. So results, why do we go to the gym? What are we looking for? Most of us are going to the gym because we want to get stronger. We're looking to decrease body fat, reduce our everyday aches and pains, improve our ability to move and perform. Uh, we're looking to feel good, improve our mental health. Most of us go to the gym for one, two, three, if not all of these things um, and more. And in our pursuit to achieve these things, 100% of people are gonna run into obstacles, right? We all run into obstacles. And the purpose of this presentation is to really identify some of the major obstacles that uh, our clients run into, and more than likely, most people who are pursuing these things are running into. And I've tried to narrow it down to five, five of the most important things. Um, you might see me like move my uh, little headspace around so you guys can reap the benefits of all of the lovely memes I've included um, in this presentation. Uh, it is eight o'clock and there is also session going on in the gym right now. So you might hear some noises and some music. So I apologize for that. And it is 8 a.m. So I am also drinking coffee. So uh, back to the obstacles. So uh, the major obstacle people um, run into is their lifestyle and society. And I'm well aware that we can do an entire uh, workshop, full day seminar on um, lifestyle adjustments but uh, we'll touch on some of the most important things uh, today. Um, we'll also talk about how society is continuing to make it incredibly difficult for people to be healthy. Uh, number two, people are just misinformed. Uh, you listen to the things that they say. Um, you were told something by someone, you read something somewhere, um, and you kind of took that word as gospel and you ran with it. And unfortunately, it wasn't the information that you needed to help you get the results that you wanted. Um, number three, you lack specificity. Uh, so you're just kind of like pursuing vague goals. Uh, number four, you're pulling the wrong lever. And this is probably where we'll spend the majority of, of the uh, workshop talking about, but Ultimately, anything you want to achieve is just going to be a constant balancing act of all of these different variables in your life. And I'll refer to these variables as, as levers. And, um, you know, some people tend to pull on the wrong lever, thinking that they're going to get a, a certain result, when in reality is they should be applying force to a different lever, or perhaps they're completely unaware of a lever that they should be focusing on and giving effort to, to get the results that they want. Um, and lastly, your lack of action. Um, in health and in fitness, uh, in order for you to get the benefit, you have to do the work, right? Like if you want to get stronger, you have to lift the weights. Like if you want to uh, recover from an injury, you have to do the, the rehabilitation process. If you want to change your body composition, you have to do the diet plan, um, right? You have to do the work to reap the benefits. And by not taking action, you will not get the results. Um, and lastly, um, I just want to touch on mindset a little bit. And in working with uh, people for about 14 years now, uh, you generally have two mindsets. You have people who, when they get to an obstacle, they harp on the obstacle and they just focus on the reasons why they can't achieve, they want to achieve the things that they are looking to do, right? So if you look at this uh, lovely kid right here, he is literally hung up on the obstacle. And a lot of people get hung up on the obstacle and it just becomes kind of like a standstill and a stalemate. Then you have people who when they get to obstacles, it is like a green light for them. They're like, all right, welcome. How do I get around it? These are the, these are the problem solvers. These are the people who understand that 
getting the things you want to achieve is a constant trial and error. And continuing to try and solve problems is what brings them success and brings them results. So you know that there's going to be an obstacle. You are committed to figuring out ways to overcome that obstacle. Uh, and you just focused on the end game, getting where you want to be and not necessarily harping. Um, harping on it, right? And I chose these pictures because here you have a kid who is biologically designed pretty well to get over the fence, right? He's got feet, he's got arms, um, he can get over the gate, but he still decides to harp on the obstacle. And most people, um, you are designed to achieve the things you want to achieve. And the number one thing that is stopping you is that you just harp on the obstacle and you think um, you think about the problem way too much rather than thinking about the solution. Um, and then you've got this, you know, this turtle who is uh, not very well biologically designed to climb a fence and get over it. Uh, and here he is just, you know, getting over the gate, putting his head on the other side, trying to, you know, just the, the grass is greener for him and he's going to get there. Sorry. Um, so here's a quick disclaimer. At Team Mojo and for personal trainers and strength and conditioning coaches across the board, um, generally we practice in the realm of exercise and improving performance and some general nutrition recommendations and some basic, you know, habitual coaching. We are not doctors. We are not your pharmacist. We're not an occupational therapist, podiatrist. We're not your therapist. We're, we're not your psychiatrist. Um, we're not dietitians, PTs, we're not massage therapists, um, and we're not your supplement specialist. We are not any of these things. Have I had people leave sessions and say, oh man, that felt good. It was like therapy. Yes. Um, have I made, um, you know, a nutrition recommendation that was a game changer for somebody? Yes. So do we, in theory, you know, provide some of the same outcomes that these people do? Yes, we do. However, our scope is in exercise and, and, and performance. And you, I will always be the first person to, to refer out to someone who's better at, at um, something that I should not be practicing in. Um, but as trainers and coaches, we, we are well aware that we wear many hats for the clients that we work with, which is why I will never shy away from being the person who will help someone move a little bit closer to the answer that they are looking for. So if in if the answer they need is in one of these areas, I understand that I might not be able to provide them the answer, but I am a catalyst and a tool for that person to get a little bit closer to it. And I take that very seriously. But you already knew that we are not all of those things. But here's what we are. We are people who spend three to six hours per week with our clients on their health, their wellness, their fitness, which I would argue is more time than our clients spend with any other healthcare professional. Um, I have clients who will maybe see their primary care physician one time per year, if that. And when they do see their primary care physician, they see them for I don't know, 20 minutes. And generally when they're seeing them, it's after that physician has seen 15 or 20 other patients. They're running an hour behind. The client probably wants to get out of there as soon as possible. Uh, they run a couple of you know basic assessments, blood pressure, heart rate, how are things going? Has anything changed? And then boom, like in those 15 minutes, your doctor either gives you like a red light or a green light. Like if they give you the green light, they pretty much said in 15 minutes, all right, everything is fine. Nothing, no red flags. Go continue to live life the way you want. I'll see you in another year. Um, or if they give you the red light, something has come up and they're like, oh, wow, let me check this out. And if you get the red light, um, now you have to react to something that was, uh, that that's an issue that you might not have been aware that you were having. And hopefully it's something minute and you'll be able to get through it. Um but more so than uh, when, when the doctors give you the red light, it's generally a, a problem that requires um, a lot of time, a lot of attention and, and focus to get through. Uh, most of my clients, that, that's it. Like they see, their, they see their PCP and the only other times they're going to a doctor, 
is for reactive reasons. They got hurt, they got injured, they're sick, they're ill, they need a prescription for medication. Um, so because our clients are spending less time with these primary care physicians, we generally become the first line of defense for our clients for all things related health, wellness, wellness, fitness, sometimes even therapeutics and sometimes even medication. And uh, I put this Rambo meme here is because our, our clients are constantly coming at us with um, a lot of things that they hear, a lot of things that that uh, they read, and most of it is just kind of, you know, arbitrary things that are going to be attacks on their health and wellness, and um, it is our responsibility to defend them for those from those things. So there's days I will be training, and I feel like I have to like shoot bullshit out of my clients brains so they can just focus on the things that are going to help them out. Uh, so here is, I, I created this slide a week ago, so, so maybe you've seen it. Um, and again, like I, I, I put this in here. These are all real questions, comments that, that I get from clients and I didn't include them to be, uh, you know, to, to make fun of my clients, although that's, you know, that's what I do. I, I enjoy joking with my clients and, and, you know, playing and, and playing jokes on them. And, but, you know, I put this here because if, if we're being asked these things on a daily basis, most of the time by multiple people, um, the reality is this is, this is the information our clients need to be made aware of. And this is the information that our clients need clarity around. So I will, you know, I'll read a couple of these, but definitely take your time and, and you know, enjoy this slide and, Hopefully you get you get some good uh, comedic relief from it, but um, I'll have clients come in, you know, and they'll ask about creatine. They'll say like, I drink a lot of seltzer. Does that count as water? Um, they'll see someone lift some type of weight and then they'll ask, how long do you think it'll take me to, to lift that weight? Um, you know, how much pre-workout should I take if I have to work out at 7 a.m.? Or should I take pre-workout if I work out at night? Um, I saw this push-up challenge on Instagram. It's a hundred a day. Do you think I should do that? Um, and it's interesting because when I, when I get asked client questions from some of these clients, generally what they're asking is probably the worst thing for that particular client. Like a client who asked me about like a push-up challenge has, um, doesn't have the best technique or form for push-ups, has some shoulder and chest issues. And now if he's, if he or she is going to go do a hundred of those a day, it's probably just going to make that, um, a little bit worse. Um, so generally uh, you'll find that when I'm asked a question and any health professional, when they're asked a question, the number one response you should always give, uh, and it's what I always give is, well, it depends. In which 99.9% .9 of the time, the client will reply, well, it depends on what? Cue, deep breath, and it depends on all sorts of things. Right. You on one end want to achieve a goal. What do you think about this? So I can have this goal or I'm looking to achieve um, X, Y or Z. Right? That's on this side of the scale. On the other side of the scale, it is going to be a constant balancing act of an infinite amount of variables for you to get the things that you, they want that you want. Um, some of those are listed here on this slide right? Like it could be a combination of your strength training, mobility, flexibility training. Um, it could be uh, an issue with your, your medication, your nutrition, your hydration, why you're not achieving the things you want to achieve, or maybe it, these things are helping you achieve that the things you want to achieve. Um, it could be your sleep. It could be like adding in more recovery workouts. It could be stress management, um, which is like a big one because all of our clients, like I, I'll, I'll have 60, 70 people walk into the gym today. And if I ask, like, are you stressed out? 99.9% .9 are going to say yes. And we know people are stressed out. And we know that that stress causes some type of harm um, at the cellular level of, of the body. But as coaches, we we don't know. Like, we don't, like, what is this stress physically and mentally doing to people? And how can we create avenues to reduce stress and then how do we measure whether or not that's actually having an impact on the client physically um, or mentally very difficult thing to do but we, we know it's there we know it's having an effect 
but we don't really have the tools and applications to assess, measure, and manage it with the exception of, are you a little bit less stressed today? Yeah, I'm a little bit less stressed today. Um, so you see there's uh, an abundance of variables that us as coaches think about, you as clients should also be thinking about, and how do we adjust these things to make sure that we're continuing to make progress and achieve the goals that we set in place. So let's dive into the uh, the number one reason why you're not hitting a hitting the goals that you're looking to to get to. Um, number one, your plate is too full, literally and figuratively. And I'll start with the figurative um, component of it. Client A walks in, um, different client A, not the one on the slide. They want to lose weight, they want to get stronger, they want to improve their range of motion, and they want to reduce their stress levels. Great. Everyone wants that. Um, in order to do that, you have to commit time to a fitness program. You have to commit energy to the fitness program. You have to commit time and energy to perhaps a nutrition plan. You have to commit efforts to reducing, um, you know, maybe some things that are causing stress in your life. Um, you have to put a lot of focus on making some adjustments. So these clients want all of these things. They require time, they require effort, they, they require money, um, but they got no time. It's not that they don't want to give any effort. It's that they're giving effort in so many other areas of their life that they just don't have much left to give when it comes to their own health and their own well-being. Um, they don't want to spend money, right? And now you have this like, you know, you're stuck in like, you know, purgatory. You want these things, they require these things, but again, you don't want to do the necessary things to, to get yourself there. So that's the figurative component. So like you have to look at your life and if you want to fit, um, you know, think about having like two, two different templates that will fit over each other and make one clear picture. You have to be able to take your current template of your life and then take the template of the things that you want and fit it into it seamlessly to make sure that there's a clear picture and a clear plan for you to move forward. Um, that's the figurative component. The literal component um, is like, for most people, you're just eating more calories than you should be. We deal with clients, 90% or more of our clients have some type of fat loss goal. And the number one most important thing for fat loss is calories in versus calories out. So my argument to that is, Shouldn't you be aware of the amount of calories you should be consuming on a daily basis to help you achieve your fat loss goal? Most people are completely unaware of that number. And because of that, you, you're wondering why you're not achieving your fat loss goal. It is hard to eat the appropriate amount of calories for fat loss. There's a difference between the appropriate amount and then like an inappropriate low amount. You might be getting fat loss goals, but that's because you just completely cut your calories and like you're just eating significantly less calories than you should be consuming. So like eating less calories, like a really low amount of calories that will help with fat loss, um, but it's not going to be a sustainable approach. So more than likely you're going to relapse and continue to overeat calories again. Um, so finding that correct amount and seeing what that correct amount looks like in food on a daily basis, I would recommend like you need to be aware of what that is. Um, and number two, everything is a threat. Look at everything around you, right? Like you are being tempted to watch more TV shows. That's sitting on your couch, watching more things. You are um, living probably in a community that has a lot of fast food restaurants. I know in this area here, You've got a million pizza places. You've got a, a McDonald's. You've got Dunkin' Donuts. You've got Taco Bells. Like you have a lot of things that are just threats. They're temptations that you have to constantly deal with. It is very easy for you to, you know, go get fast food. It's cheap. It's easy. It's very easy for you to sit home and, you know, watch a show. Um, and it's very easy for you to go to the store 
and pick up uh, a medication that's going to, you know, stop a symptom that you might be having. But these things uh, in reality are possible threats and you have to start viewing all of these things as threats to your health and wellness. Like, um, you know, I'm the type of person like I, I, I any when it comes to, to health, wellness, fitness, I'm always questioning um, because I have to be, again, that that first line of defense for, for my clients. And I have to ask why, what are the impacts this is going to have? And if you view something as a threat, you'll tend to really vet it out before you start to incorporate in your um, everyday life as something that's going to be an opportunity for you to get healthier. So start viewing things more as a threat as opposed to something that's going to add health and wellness into your life. And you have to ask yourself that, is this going to add you know, health and wellness? Am I going to feel better by doing this? Is my body going to perform better by doing this? And is my, you know, my, my doctor's exam going to be better by doing this? Um, right. So watch out for the threats. Uh, so here's a quick example of, of client A. Uh, client A spends four to six hours per day driving, um, two to four hours per day sitting on their couch watching shows. They have a random lunch five days per week uh, because they're always on the go and wherever they're parked or, or stationed at lunchtime, uh, generally will they get some lunch. Uh, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, dinner and drinks. Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, dinner, drinks. Occasionally, uh, a weekday drink, um, but this client will argue tooth and nail that they're not a drinker because they rarely drink uh, during the week and they only drink on the weekends, but on the weekends, they're probably putting away like 20 drinks. So if you just drink one day a week, you're a drinker. Like if you drink two or three days a week, you're definitely um, a drinker. And of course, like anyone who frequently drinks um, and doesn't have great nutrition, that has a direct uh, a direct impact on your sleep. So his sleep is trash. They exercise two to four times per week and twice at T-Mojo. Uh, this client started to experience some significant back pain. And looking at this profile, what would you recommend this client does? Right? They, they should probably spend less time in the car. They should probably spend less time on the couch start to clean up their nutrition, maybe reduce alcohol consumption. And um, hopefully those things will impact their, their sleep. And that might have uh, a positive effect on, on their back pain. It would hopefully have a positive effect on their back pain. However, uh, this client didn't do any of those things. They went to the doctor. They told the client, they told the doctor that they go work out. And the doctor was like, well, you should probably stop going to the gym. So this client stopped working out. Now, obviously, there's some more detail in their workouts, right? Like he could have told the doctor that he was doing something and the doctor perceived that as like a, a dangerous exercise or a dangerous lift. Uh, but if you work at a team manager, you know that we are more than accommodating and we will work around any injury to make you feel better, rehab and recover from that injury and do whatever it takes to be able to keep you training consistently. That's our responsibility. The doctor doesn't know that. The doctor probably thinks we're putting a bunch of plates on a barbell and just deadlifting till our spines like eject from our back. So big disconnect there. So they go to the doctor. And of course, the doctor's word is always taken more seriously than the coach's word. Most of the times it should be. Um, however, uh, there there is times that I will speak with clients and they'll tell me what their doctor said. And I'm like, wow, like maybe I should just go get a PhD so people could take me as seriously as that because that's not good advice. But because it's coming from a doctor, it must be. And they stopped working out. Uh, back pain obviously got worse and still dealing with some issues. So, um, you know, this this is what we have to deal with as coaches. And this is what our clients are being told sometimes by the people who are the supposed to be the, the pinnacles of, of health um, and wellness. And again, society making it really easy for you to be unhealthy. Even doctors at times are making it really easy for you to do the things that are gonna be more threatening to your health and wellness. Uh, so reason number two why you're not getting results uh, you listen to the things that they say so every time you read something hear something see something you take it and you just kind of run with it 
Um, right. We, we all here have heard you should do more cardio to lose weight. Um, everything in balance and moderation. Carbs are bad. So these are some common fitness myths that that we hear. And I'll spend uh, a couple minutes kind of debunking these. So let's start with uh, you should do more cardio to lose weight. So if you see where it says like weight loss and calories, what really matters that that image there. This image pretty much is a breakdown about how we as humans, you know, burn calories throughout the day. Weight loss is constant battle of input versus output. If you burn more calories than you put in, then more than likely you're going to lose weight unless you have some type of underlying medical reason or some medication that is inhibiting that. Uh, but that's that's a simple equation and it works. Um, but when you look at how we how we burn calories, you might start to think about, um, you know, your approach a little bit differently. Like you're not going to be that person that says they want to lose weight. So they go and start to run, right? That's like your, your, your run for 20 minutes or 30 minutes that you're burning an extra 200 calories, maybe 300 calories. Like you're, you're, you're going to replace that really quick with, you know, an extra serving of carbohydrates or, um, you know, one, a piece of, of dessert, right? Like then that's gone. Like all that extra work is gone. However, um, if you understand that, like wh where these calories are coming from, it'll change your mindset and change your approach so that you can over time build a body that's going to be more sustainable for fat loss. And when you look at this chart, you'll see that 60 to 65% of the calories you burn each day come from your BMR, which is essentially your body performing its day-to-day -day functions, breathing, your organs doing their work. Like you can lay on your couch the entire day. And the good news is you're going to burn calories. Um, then you've got about 15 to 20% um, of the calories you burn comes from meat, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is essentially all of the activity you do beyond laying on the couch, but not included in your exercise routine. So if you're moving throughout the day at work, going up down the stairs, having conversations, speaking with you know your hands, any movement you do beyond laying down and not included in your exercise is where you're gonna get your next biggest kick of caloric expenditure. Um, third most uh, would be uh, digesting food. So TEF, which is the thermogenic effect of food. So this is the amount of calories your body burns by digesting foods which is why it's important to eat healthy foods, whole protein, nutritious foods, because your body utilizes a lot more energy to digest and process these things. Um, so here, when you're eating whole foods, you're generally eating foods that are more nutritious, have less calories, and your body's actually burning more calories to digest them. Um, so it's a win-win it's a situation. Uh, and lastly, 10% of your daily caloric expenditure is going to come from exercise. So as you can see, the amount of calories you burn mostly comes from you just being you and your body just functioning the way it's supposed to function. However, although exercise only require, uh, only uh, accounts for 10% of your daily caloric expenditure, exercise is your opportunity to further enhance and improve your BMR and your knee, right? So if you have more muscle mass, on your body, your body will generally burn more calories at rest. So you want to use exercise as an opportunity to build muscle mass, build strength to help improve your, your BMR. So rather than going to the gym and thinking about burning as many calories as possible, you should be going to the gym and worrying about putting on as much armor as possible against the 23 hour battle of fat loss that you're going to face once you leave your one hour workout. Um, your gym session should also be focused on improving your, your ability to move and, and, and feeling good, um, and avoiding being sore and avoiding, you know, potentially injuring yourself, right? Because if you leave the gym and you feel good, you're more than likely to, to do more active things throughout the day, as opposed to if you're incredibly sore, you might spend more time on the couch the next day. If you overtrain and you injure yourself, Think about the effect that's going to have on um, your 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 desire to to move additionally throughout the day. So you should use training to feel good and reduce aches and pains, and essentially prepare your body to want to be to want to move more. Other twenty three hours that you're not in the gym.
Um, and then, you know, TEF, like just change the way you eat and you can change your caloric expenditure a little bit. Um, I'll touch on one more of these uh, fitness myths because I kind of just spoke on the last three where, um, you know, no pain, no gain. Like you shouldn't be training to a point where you're incredibly sore because that'll limit your ability to want to move the rest of the day or the day after or even show up for training. Um, but everything in balance and moderation. Um, I I said this in the workshop. I, I will give $100 to anyone who can describe to me um, what balance is, like who is living in balance. And um, you can take your best chance at answering it, but you won't be able to. And, and here's why. Um, when I think about balance, I think about being centered, right? Like if we have a scale, balance would be the direct center of that scale with, um, you know, equal things on either side. And no one, no one can identify nor lives with equal things on either side. And when we're talking about health and wellness, right, the the optimal side of the scale would be you're you're following a great workout routine. You have a, a, a nutritionist that is giving you nutritious foods to the right calorie and macronutrient profile. You've got no stress. You're you're taking the perfect supplementation that you need. You you just feel good. You're great. You're just like boom. Perfect health, wellness, no injuries, no stress. No one has that. Um, on this side of the scale, you know, you're essentially like the polar opposite of that. Like you're eating whatever you want, whenever you want, in however many quantities that you want. You are either not training or your training is detrimental. You are stressed to the absolute max, whether it's work related, family related, anything. Um, right? You you have everything going bad for you. And what I find now in society is that that goalpost is, is, is constantly shifting on, on both sides, but the rate on the unhealthy side, it's, it's shifting and is way more accelerated. So what I mean is in the society that we live in, again, everything is a threat. There are more opportunities for you to take on things that are that are unhealthy. Like you are spending less time exercising and more time watching TV. You are being um, you know, surrounded by more nutritious options that are generally bad for you. So more fast food restaurants are going up than healthy food restaurants are going up. Um, right? More things are being marketed at you for dollars as opposed to your health. So with all of these things being pumped onto this side of the scale more and more and more and more, the center of the scale is now shifting. And I would argue that today, what someone would be, what, what we described as someone who's socially healthy um, is a lot different than it was 20 years ago or, or 30 years ago, right? Now you're saying that it's more socially acceptable to to eat a particular way, to look a particular way. Um, and, and the reality is, is like, you, you shouldn't be looking at what's socially acceptable and just start looking at like science and like what, what is optimal and, and what is healthy. And with this side of the scale constantly moving, just imagine where the center is gonna be in five years or in 10 years or in 15 years, right? Like there's no surprise, like we, we live in the most obese country in the world. Um, why is that? Like, go and look at like what kids are being fed in schools for school lunch. It's not, it's not great. Um, right. So that scale is constantly moving. So it is impossible for people to live in balance. One, when you can't describe the two endpoints and two, when the goalpost is constantly shifting over. So, uh, don't try and live in, in, in balance, right? Like that, I, I, I feel like that that whole mindset needs to be shifted a little bit differently. And, even simplifying that further, pe people look at that as, oh, well, like, you know, I eat, I eat great throughout the week. So I'll like do what I want on the weekend is balance. Right. And it's just like, no, that's not balance. Like you, you grossly underestimate how one, one bad meal can impact four or five days of good eating. Like people grossly underestimate that. 
Uh, people grossly underestimate how one week of training can impact them. They're like, oh, like I'm not going to work out this week or like there needs to be backup plans for a week that you're not going to train. There's things that you can do. So yes, one cheat meal will have a bigger impact than you think. Uh, one missed week of working out will have a bigger uh, impact than you think. It's not the end of the world. I'm not saying it's the end of the world. But what I'm saying is you have to stop telling yourself that it's not a big deal uh, because it it is a deal. It's not the biggest of deals because it's not the end of the world. But if you keep telling yourself it's not a big deal, you're not going to get results because it is a big deal when it comes to you achieving results. Um, number three, your goals lack specificity. So more so than not, when you started at Team Mojo or with any gym, you either wanted to lose weight, get stronger, feel better, move better, get jacked. Uh, you were probably looking to achieve one, two, three, if not all of these things. And when you come in and say that, we as trainers, we we understand what you want. However, by applying some more specificity to it, it gives us an opportunity to now create a dialed in plan. Like think about, um, think about like a GPS, right? Like if, if you said in a GPS, like take me to take me to New York, like you all know the general direction of driving to New York, right? But then now it's just like, take me to, um, take me to Manhattan. All right, well, we all know the general direction of like getting into Manhattan. Like you're getting a little bit closer, but again, you have to put like a, a pinpoint address to get to where you want to go. And your goal should be the same way. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I have this dartboard on here because most people like their goals are vague. When your goals are vague, it's like it's like playing darts blindfolded, right? So you know where the dartboard is. Right? Have your blindfold on. You know where the dartboard is. And you're just kind of taking shots, playing, playing, playing. You might hit the dartboard. You'll hit in the area of the dartboard, right? So your, your focus and attention is going in the right direction. However, if you take that blindfold off and you make your goal a little bit more specific, right? So in darts, right? If you want to hit the bullseye with no blindfold, what are you looking at? Looking at the bullseye. What are you thinking about? You're thinking about the bullseye. What, what are you aiming at? Like all of your focus and energy is on the bullseye and your goal should be viewed the same way. So when you say you want to lose weight, I want to hear something like, I want to lose five pounds of fat within the next two months, right? Like I can get anybody to lose five pounds of weight, right? Like don't eat for two days. Don't drink any water, um, sit in a sauna. You will lose weight. Is that the goal? Um, probably not. You probably want to lose body fat. And we can measure that. And that should be what you're focusing on. Um, you want to get stronger? Everyone wants to get stronger. What does that mean to you? Because the way you want to get stronger might be uh, a little bit different than the way I want to get stronger. Um, so here's an example. You want to perform 10 push-ups with great technique and no pain. This is a very specific goal. Maybe we could decide a time a time frame to it. However, like you want to do 10 push-ups, that's great. We have a number uh, with great technique, right? Because the last thing we want to see is you you getting to this number and like they don't look good, right? Do you want to do 10 push-ups and you're okay if they look like shit? Or do you want to do like 10 push-ups with great form? Uh, and you want to do them pain-free. Maybe you've been having some shoulder pain, some elbow pain. It gives us another caveat to work with and another measurable to get to that goal. Because yeah, you did 10 push-ups, but it hurt like hell. Like, is that a worthy goal? Probably not, but you did 10 push-ups with good technique and you had no pain, a little bit better. Um, you want to feel better. Again, everyone wants to feel better. I don't know what that means to you. Please tell me. Um, but you want to feel more energetic when you wake up in the morning and avoid needing the afternoon um, coffee. So again, this goal is a little bit more specific, um, a more challenging goal to measure, um, but we're always going to have these goals where we're going to have to have our clients just give us feedback. Like, how did it feel on a scale of one to 10 this, like, um, you know, but make, like maybe in the afternoon, like you, you made some changes to your nutrition, you were sleeping a little bit better because you made those changes. You went to bed a little bit earlier. And then you find that the next day, you know, you've kind of like smoked through your afternoon of work and didn't even think about that cup of coffee. Uh, move better. Again, be specific, um, get jacked, right? This is an actual thing that, people tell us um what does that mean like do you want to get like Arnold Schwarzenegger Jack the Rock Jack Zac Efron Jack like what are we talking here let me know um because if you weigh 150 pounds and you want to get like Arnold Schwarzenegger Jack like that's probably not an achievable goal uh for you with the, the resources that we have 
Um, but you want to gain five pounds of lean muscle mass, lose 5% body fat, uh, and see more veins in your arms when you flex. All measurable. This is something I was definitely told. Um, you know, it, for some people, they might look at this and be like, oh, that's like a little vein, a vein goal, but whatever. Like, it's a goal that I can easily measure and manage. Um, so again, get more specific with your goals and try not to train for too many goals at once. Because sometimes you might want something and want another thing and training for those two things might actually be um, conflicting with each other. So I like to pick like two goals or three goals and generally nest them and stack them. So I'm going to focus on two things um, that I know when I'm pursuing on maybe the bigger ambitious goal, these two things are achievable and they're going to help me get to, to that bigger goal. Uh, lack of specificity continued. Keep the goal to goal. Um, I gave a workshop the other day or a, a chat to a bunch of college kids. And, and this demographic is notorious for um, not keeping the goal to goal. You want one thing. And as soon as you're faced uh, with any sign of difficulty or, or obstacles, you kind of just pivot and move on to something else, right? You, you, you can't do that. You have to figure out um, solutions. You have to solve problems. Otherwise, you're just, you know, changing the goal is a habit that you're teaching yourself, a habit that you're learning, and um, you're just going to constantly change direction, change direction, change direction. So you're, you know, you, you make some progress somewhere, and then you just kind of can't do it, move on to something else. So keep the goal, the goal. And I understand that sometimes hitting goals can be very difficult. Um, so when you do hit goals, it's good to decompress and plan for your next goal. Like reward yourself, decompress, get your foot off the gas, plan for the next goal. But what if you're like trying to pursue the goal and you're just, you're like, oh, this is like, this is no longer good. Like when does it uh, become okay for you to jump ship on the goal? Um, and my thought process is it's okay to jump ship when you feel like you've made good progress towards it or the risk benefit ratio is potentially compromising other things. So if you're pursuing a strength goal and now all of a sudden there's other areas in your life that are su that are suffering, um, then the goal, you, you have to, you have to make an adjustment and only you will be able to answer that question. And maybe a coach will be able to help and guide you through that. Um, but again, like you should be looking to make progress towards your goals before you pivot and jump ship. Um, and then make sure that you're pursuing goals isn't isn't compromising any other areas of life that you're not willing to compromise because we understand that by by pursuing some things at times we have to be selfish, and for those of you who have family or or, or other responsibilities or work, um, make them aware of your goals so they know that you're temporarily being selfish or understand that like other people places or things are going to be impacted by it and you have to be okay with that to achieve that goal. Um, and lastly, like life happens, shit happens all the time, right? Like you get thrown like a, a wrecking ball you take like a punch in the face from life and like shit has to change and that's okay. Number four, uh, you're pulling the wrong lever. So as I mentioned in the beginning, like a, a achieving a goal is going to be a constant balancing act of a bunch of different variables or, or levers in your life. And in this slide, I kind of put some common uh, goals that people pursue and some of the most common levers that you would have to adjust to give you the biggest return on investment. Um, so if your goal is body composition, right, more than likely you're going to focus on nutrition, sleep, exercise, and stress. And I tried to prioritize, prioritize these as best as I can. However, um, this is general prioritization. Sometimes the priority of, of levers is, is different for the individual. So a, a takeaway for you should be when you are looking to pursue something, identifying all of the levers and which lever is the, the main lever you need to focus on to get results or get progress. And it might not necessarily be the one that makes the most sense. So body composition, right? Like if you fix your nutrition, it's going to help out with your body composition. If you sleep well, it's going to help out with your body composition. And then I would say exercise and stress are kind of like 
a, a close battle between like the third and fourth most important lever for those things. Now, looking at this, when someone wants to change their body composition, what's the number one thing that they focus on? They probably focus on exercise, right? And they have now prioritized exercise as the number one lever. They put all of their time, effort, and energy and money into exercise. They don't change anything nutrition. They still sleep like shit, and they're still stressed to the max, and they don't get the body composition goal that they're looking for. Why? Because they put all of their time, energy, and focus on the wrong lever. Pick the lever that's most appropriate. If you live a really, really stressful life, stress now becomes your number one lever. You need to manage your stress a little bit better so you can figure out ways to adjust these other levers in your life. Um, you want to get stronger. Uh, the number one thing you should focus on is strength training. Probably strength training a little bit harder than you think, um, right? Uh, sleep and nutrition. So someone says they, they, they want to get stronger and, you know, strength training, they, they sign up to work out two days per week. Right? Can you get stronger two days per week? Yes. Should it be more like three, four, or sometimes five? Absolutely. But you don't have the time to do three, four, or five. So now what becomes your primary leader? If the number one goal is to get stronger and the best way to get stronger is probably to strength train three, four times, you need to find the time to do that. So yes, yeah, strength training is an important lever, but what's blocking it? Time. So now you need to focus on time management to ensure that you can fit strength training into your life. Um, this is like one of the biggest things that we see is like, oh, I'm, I'm not getting stronger or um, like, I, I want my son or daughter to be training a student athlete. I want my son or daughter to get stronger. Um, I want them to be able to do this. Um, they have time to work out once per week. It's helpful. It's more helpful than it is harmful. It's, it's going to do something for sure. But like, you have to spend time under tension and it's got to be more than one time per week. And some of these um, clients, when they do train one or two times per week, like they don't train hard enough. Um, you, you probably have to train a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to reduce your everyday aches and pains. Uh, most of the time, the variable in here is not something people need to start doing, but something they need to stop doing. Going back to that client who's having back pain, spending six hours a day in their car, right? Like you need to spend less time in your car. Like I don't care how many knee switches and cat cows we do. I don't care how many massages you get. Like you being in the car for six hours a day, five days a week is, is the lever we need to focus on. And you completely neglect it. And that's, you know, I understand that you, you might not have a choice because you need to work and you need to make a living, but like, you also need to understand that like, this is what's causing your issues. So maybe you need to have a hard conversation, one with yourself, a hard conversation with your boss or, or, or whatever, like you need to face that situation and you need to come up with a solution. And most people don't want to have the difficult conversation, um, to make the adjustments, but like there are things that you're potentially doing every day that are putting you at risk and compromising you. And there's taking small jabs at your health and wellness and day, day after day, it, it might seem like it's manageable and, and, you know, you can deal with it, but like in one year or two years, like a lot of little jabs turns into a, a big deal. So address it now before it's too late. Uh, and again, like I've been saying, the obvious lever is not always the answer question like if you want to achieve this what is the one thing you have to focus on and generally that might not be the number one area you have to apply your energy time and efforts to it might be something else so as with any goal my recommendation is you identify as many levers as possible and then prioritize the first two to three levers um, in that goal to your lifestyle you have to look at your lifestyle. What's the most important thing I need to focus on and adjust in my lifestyle to get to X, Y, and or Z? Um, finding the right lever continued. But what if, what if the lever now becomes the goal? And this is something that gets overlooked a lot. 
So what I mean is like if someone wants a body composition change, um, they generally have to focus on nutrition, training, and recovery. But they know absolutely nothing about nutrition. And we've identified nutrition as the number one leader. Guess what the goal has to become now? The goal now becomes nutrition. We have to focus on educating, teaching, and making nutritional changes in your life, right? Because we can't have that body composition goal without the process of good nutrition. But if you are completely unaware of the process of nutrition, you have no idea how to get to the body composition goal because we know nothing about nutrition. Guess what? Like body composition goal out, nutrition goal in, we need to learn and make nutrition the goal and make becoming better in this lever the goal. Um, so if you see here on the slide, like if you want to improve your quality of sleep, uh, go to a sleep specialist, right? Um, you'll see on the slide, like if you want to get better nutrition, go to the top, top of the chain, right? A, a dietitian or a nutritionist. You want to improve your quality of sleep, go to a sleep doctor. Yeah. Like we live in a world now where we actually have sleep doctors. People are so stressed out, can't sleep, like something that just comes so naturally to you. Like we've just gotten to a point as a country where we have to have people who have PhDs in sleep to help you close your eyes, rest, and recover. Because you can't figure out how to do that on your own. Or society has just made life so jacked up that people now need specialists to help them sleep. Um, like we live in like the era of specialists now. The amount of clients I see that, that I, there, I hear a new specialist every, uh, every year. Um, it's insane. Um, if you want to exercise, you have, you've never trained before ever in your life, like go hire a coach and like have someone like they will teach you like speed, 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 speed. Like they will help you avoid problems They'll put you in the right, uh, the right hands. And, um, yeah, yes, this costs time, this costs money, but again, you, you don't have an infinite amount of time to, to achieve your goals, right? You should be setting goals that you can achieve four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, um, and like medication, um, you know, coaches and trainers are not, are not medication experts. And I find that on average, all of our clients are taking at least one, sometimes two uh, medications. And every medication you take, I don't care what it is, every medication you take has some type of side effect. And you need to be made aware of what that side effect is. And most people are in denial and think that they will not fall victim to the side effects of their medications. You are wrong. And, you know, your doctor will tell you like this medication has this side effect or that side effect. And then maybe you go to another doctor or you take like another medication just because it's like, you, you know, you think it's good for you or it's over the counter and it's easy to grab and it's easy to access. And, you know, that also has side effects, but you think you're immune to it. Um, all of your medications for the most part have, have been studied for side effects and you should be made aware of them. However, if you are taking multiple medications, what are the side effects now of taking all of those medications in combination? I do not know the answer to that. Um, you probably do not know the answer to that. And if there hasn't been a, a study on it, then, then who does? So, you know, what side effects are your medications or combinations of medications causing that are preventing you from achieving the things that you want to achieve? And you need to be an advocate for yourself to figure out what that is. Um, you know, I, I know people sometimes have to be on medications for particular things. My recommendation to you is whoever's responsible for prescribing you medications, talk to them about an exit plan or exit strategy if that is possible for you. I'm not recommending you stop making a medication, but I am recommending that you figure out if there's a way for you to get to a point where you don't have to rely on medication anymore and take that seriously. Uh, and number five, lack of action. So again, we lack, uh, we avoid action when it's too much of an inconvenience. Like we live in a society where everything is convenient. You want something, order it on Amazon. It's delivered to your door. You hungry, order it on Uber Eats. It's delivered to your door. You want to uh, learn something, go on the internet. You want to laugh, like go find something funny on the internet. You, you just want to like sit and veg out and like do something mindless, like go watch a show. Like your life is very convenient right now. Um, like you don't have to take difficult action anymore. And 
your goals are going to require time. They're going to require money. They're going to require brain power. And sometimes pursuing them, it's going to be boring. Like doing the same fitness program often, it's boring. Eating the same food all the time, it's boring. I get it. Like, but your mindset has to shift because at the end of the day, your goals are worth all of those things. So embrace it. It, it It's not forever. People look at like a, a fitness goal or pursuing something as something that they have to do forever. View pursuing a goal as a four week or six week um, portion of your life. And then you get to kind of like adjust off of it and then figure it out. But what you'll find is that anytime you lock in for a goal, um, you acclimate to that, you adjust to it, you you enjoy it, right? You feel good. And guess what? Like it feels good to feel good. Um, and remember, like no one can do the work for you, right? If you want to get stronger, like me lifting the weights isn't going to get you stronger. You got to lift the goddamn weights. Um, if you want to uh, reduce your body fat, like you have to put the correct foods in your mouth. Stop putting the wrong foods um, in your mouth. Like you want to improve your sleep, like you need to figure out what it is you're going to have to do to improve your sleep. So again, you have to be the biggest advocate for yourself. The plus side is like, you know, even though we can't do the work for you, uh, we can help you develop a plan. Uh, we'll provide you for support. We, we can provide some motivation. So you're more likely to adhere to it as best as possible. So I know we're going to talk about different strategies to help you overcome your goals. we got a couple more minutes. Um, so I, I created this kind of like framework because I believe that empowering people to be able to figure things out for themselves um, is more important than actually telling them the solution. We all want the actual solution, but the reality is the common solution might not be the best solution for you. So if you understand how to find the solution best for yourself, um, great, because then you'll be able to find, um, you know, find your way through achieving multiple goals. So number one, you got to decide. Decide what it is the goal uh, you're looking to pursue. Number two, define. Define all of the potential levers that could contribute to you getting to that goal or um, possibly like, having difficulty getting to that goal. And number three, uh, dissect. So looking at those levers, dive deep into each of those levers. Um, and, and I'll go to that, go to that and show you what I mean on, on uh, in a couple of slides. Uh, once you've dived deep into those levers, you have to design a plan. And then lastly, you have to do it. So number one, decide and define, pick a specific goal. Um, and then define all of the contributing levers. So here's an example. Like you want to feel more energetic when you wake up in the morning and avoid needing an afternoon coffee. What are the levers? Probably got to look at my sleep. Probably got to look at my nutrition. Probably got to look at my stress levels. Probably got to look at my job. Um, and these are all things that are going to help contribute um, to whether my, um, my needing of that afternoon coffee will either um, continue to stay or subside a bit. Um, and once you've picked a specific goal, you decided it. And then once you've defined all of the potential levers that are involved with that, uh, you have to dissect. And here's what I mean by dissect. Right? So let's pick one one of these variables. Let's pick uh, sleep, right? If I get better sleep, I'll probably have better energy the next day. But sleep and any variable has a million sub variables. There's so many layers to it. So as a coach, I now say, all right, well, if we're, if we're looking to fix someone's sleep, we have to figure out what are the areas we we can look at. So how long are you sleeping? What's the duration? Um, are you uh, exposed to light late at night? Uh, are you watching shows? Are shows keeping you up at night? Um, is the type of food you're eating preventing you from having, having a good quality of sleep? Is your caffeine intake through the roof? What medications are you on that could be potentially impacting your sleep? Um, you know, are you consuming alcohol? What are you thinking about now? What's occupying your mind? What's stressing you out? What's causing you anxiety? What type of mattress do you sleep on? What type of pillow? What's the temperature in your room? What position do you sleep in? Uh, do you have some type of injury that's preventing you from getting comfortable at night? Is your mind always racing? What's your programming or your exercise routine looking like? Do you work out late at night? Are you working out too intense? Uh, what kind of weird noises are going on in your neighborhood? Do you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom? So if you look at just sleep, look at all of the sub variables um, in just sleep. And this is this is what I mean about getting specific to your lifestyle, because these are going to be different for everybody. So you have to make yourself aware and and dive into detail on, on certain levers, because 
we want to make recommendations that fit you and your lifestyle. The, the, the age of general recommendations is done. Like you do have some general principles that work, but everyone is unique. Your health, your fitness, your wellness is unique to you. And so should be the strategies you use to pursue progress in those areas. So here's a recommendation I would maybe give to this person. So this is what I mean by design, right? You have to design a solution. So here was a solution. Stop drinking caffeine at 10 a.m. So no caffeine after 10. Stop food and water by 6 p.m. and drop the temperature two degrees and wear an eye cover and listen to soothing sounds. So this would be a recommendation that I would give to someone who maybe is looking to improve their quality of sleep. Um, simple, easy recommendation. Um, you know, it, it, it might need, it might not be easy for them to to apply it, but these are the things that you probably have to start. Um, these are these are the types of adjustments you need to start making things like this something specific to you as an individual for you to start to make progress and then we got our buddy exhibit here um you know yo dog i heard you needed to be motivated so i'm thinking being motivated about motivation will get you motivated um everyone is motivated to find motivation so we all for the most part are aware that things need to be done or we should be doing more things. And we put those things on the back burner till we find some motivation to put them on the front burner. And if you stopped being motivated to find motivation and use that motivation and applied it to actually just doing the shit you're supposed to be doing, you'll be much better off. And so again, if you're motivated to find motivation, the motivation is there. You just have to apply to a different byproduct at the end. And number five, oops, sorry. Back. So before we get to number five, I have a couple more strategies. So again, if you're looking at someone who, uh, if you're a weight loss, uh, a body fat goal, these are some important strategies I've seen clients use in the past that might work well. Um, number one, for body composition, know the number of calories you should be consuming and see what that looks like in food. Just know it, at least know the number. Um, weigh-ins on Friday and Monday. Most people do pretty good from Monday morning to Friday. So if you weigh in Friday, um, like use that number and compare that number to what Monday morning uh, looks like. Because once Friday night hits, people start to go rogue. I know I'm guilty of it. I'm out of routine, work schedules a little bit. Friends want to be do some social events. So you get thrown off. And then if on Monday morning you look at the scale and it's significantly different and it's at a direction that you don't want it to go in, we know what the problem is, right? The problem is now Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's that becomes a lever we have to focus on. Um, when you're breakfast every single day, for some reason, people think this is the most difficult meal to have. I don't know why, because you can have it. You can start breakfast the night before. Put a smoothie or a protein shake in your fridge to grab and go. Make overnight oats. Like Put something nutritious in your refrigerator the night before or get up earlier and make something healthy in the morning and like win the battle right away like when you get up put some healthy nutrition in your body you're going to feel better you're going to perform better and you are setting yourself up for success if you get up and you skip breakfast or um put on un unhealthy things like you know you you you, you lost round one of, of a full battle so like at least win round one and start with that um, build all of your meals around protein and eat the protein first. Um, so if you know you have to consume um, X amount of protein, like you should be focused on making sure that your meals have adequate protein in it and eat your protein first. Fill up on protein, then your veggies, and then save your carbs for less. Um, have some water before every meal. This can prevent uh, overeating. Uh, no food three hours before bed. Uh, schedule an event, trip, gathering, or photo shoot. Uh, if, if you know, you have to be on a beach or in a bathing suit, uh, I see this multiple times for male and female clients. If they know they have to be on a beach in a bathing suit or going on vacation, like they just, the motivation is there. They become locked in and great. Like that's fine. So maybe we need to schedule more of these types of events into your program. So you are a little bit more, um, consistent, um, compete with someone and, and place a wager. I hate losing. So if I want to achieve something, I will try and find someone to, to compete with. And uh, that keeps me motivated. Again, trying to find some motivation. So that keeps me motivated. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, here's like a gut, a gut punch. Um, you know, the, the cheat meal you have or that cheat day you have, it's going to set you back more than you think.
uh, if you're a strength goal client, right? Strength train hard two to four times per week, closer to the four. Um, prioritize your workouts on days you can get more sleep. So again, if you want to get stronger, training should be hard. Recovery should be hard as well. So stop putting your workouts at night when you have to wake up the next day and you have the busiest day ever and you have no time to recover. You're going from like a stressful workout right into a stressful 24-hour period of like work and stress. Not optimal. So prioritize your workouts on days you can you can recover a little bit better. Uh, eliminate noise in your training. Uh, maybe you're not getting stronger because you're doing too much and not recovering enough. Speak with a coach. Figure out what in your program is just fluff and can you get rid of it? and actually make faster progress or are you just like doing exercise and training more because like mentally it feels good um add in a daily volume goal i work with a lot of clients who live in a corporate uh who work in a corporate environment corporate setting and they don't have like an hour at a time or half an hour at a time but they have like 10 minute blocks or 20 minute blocks um so if they want to get stronger like great you have um these five 10 minute blocks throughout the day uh, I need you to get to 100 push-ups before you go to bed. I don't care how you do it. Just get to your 100 push-ups. Um, you want to build your core strength, fine. I need you to get to a total of five minutes in a plank position throughout the day. I don't care how you do it. Just do it. So between their breaks, uh, meetings, clients, like they're knocking out some push-ups, they're doing some planks, they're, they're getting something done. It's not ideal. It's not desirable. But like, again, this is a recommendation you have to make for someone's lifestyle. If you can't give me an hour straight, but you have six 10 minute breaks throughout the day and we're going to maximize those 10 minute breaks again it's about taking your current life and uh you know the plan and having it fit um fit with each other right because if if i take your life and the plan is this and it doesn't work well together then no one wins um you know and here's the gut punch right your one missed week of training it's going to set you back more than you think and number five right we all know what the slogan is for nike you just got to do it um at the end of the day you are responsible for your health and your wellness, nobody else. So take the necessary action to uh, be in control of it as much as you can and understand that it's going to take some time. And here's my secret for everyone. The goal is the process. Once you've identified or designed the plan to get the thing that you want, Stop focusing on the thing that you want and focus on the plan. Your goal now becomes to be the best at that plan possible. All right, so I hope this is helpful. Feel free to email me back or pin me for uh, some questions and uh, look forward to me being able to attend the next workshop.